What's up, ladies and gentlemen? It is the King and I Life podcast, hosted by myself, Soul Touch of the Poet, and my brother, Son Soul X, in his joint. Check it out. Hit us up www.kingandilife.com for all our podcast info. Subscribe to whatever podcast platform that you choose. Also, hit us up k i n g a n d e y e three six nine at gmail.com. Email us your suggestions, your feedback, and all that good stuff. Tune in to us live on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter, Wednesday, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. And make sure you like, subscribe, and share because we are all over all those social media platforms. Stay tuned for the good stuff. Yeah, we are. So do you ever get frustrated, and how do you look at that aspect? I get frustrated all the time. I mean, literally all the time. Um, because we are, as in some cases, not all, um, mm-hmm. in some cases, we are just as much to blame as other people, you know, but then I'm also sympathetic to some degree because sometimes, you know, the stupidity is because they're ignorant of their alternatives. Mm-hmm. If all you see is doom gloom poverty you know and struggle then how do you know anything different you know they're just kind of products of their environment and Hmm. and then in some cases um it's a means of survival and i don't you know, I, I'm saying I live, you know, outside of Chicago. So mm-hmm. I'm I'm in my little suburban life where, you know, the gang members that we have to deal with are the wildlife, you know, the squirrels and the raccoons <laughs> that turn up our garbage cans. You know, we don't really oh, have to worry man. about, you know, the other stuff that may be in, you know, inner city Chicago, what they're dealing with. But then um I've had you know, instances, you know, I still, I still have friends. I still have relatives who live Mm -hmm. actually in Chicago in some of these disadvantaged neighborhoods. Um, And I see the stuff that goes on and, you know, sometimes I get frustrated. Mm -hmm. Um, Several years ago, actually, let me see, my son is 10. So about 10 years ago, I was working with a nonprofit and we were working at a school that was in, well, you know, there's gentrification happening now in Chicago, but mm. prior to the gentrification, it was in one of um, the poor neighborhoods in Chicago. And these these young kids who, you know, were, I can't even say they were starting out life. We're, I'm talking fifth graders, mm-hmm. you know. The things that they knew and that they were involved in at fifth grade, at the fifth grade level, wow, it was just mind blowing. Like, you know, fifth graders like strung out, strung out on drugs. Really? Wow. Fifth, fifth graders in, in, engaged in orgies. You know, fifth graders being bringing drugs to school, and I'm not talking, you know, marijuana. I'm not talking, you know, we were teenagers. We, you know, we experimented where, you know, we take a sip of beer and, you know, we're right, drunk. Yeah, yeah. I mean, these were like kids that were like deep, deep in, like addicted to the point where they suffer withdrawals if they didn't get their fix. And it's like wow. at fifth grade, I couldn't fathom, you know, living that kind of lifestyle in fifth grade. But for them, that's normal, you know. And how can you not, you know, feel sympathetic towards that? But then mm-hmm. on the flip side, it's kind of like, okay, I'm sympathetic towards the kids and I'm enraged at the adults because yeah, yeah. the adults are teaching <laughs> the kids, you know, and this is why this is their new normal. Yeah, I, I definitely um, feel you on that. I feel you Yeah, on that. I mean, but then when you see the stupid stuff, you know, like... I'm bring it up, but uh, you know they they had the PPP scam mm-hmm. for the pandemic, and I I tell you I was like I was so 
enraged at the stuff that I was seeing, you know, yeah. they're on social media bragging, you know, that they just got this money. And, you know, for me as a business owner, you know, when I was starting out several years ago, like I wish that I had, exactly. you know, some seed money <laughs> to kind of give me a head start. It's like, okay, right. we had to bootstrap. You guys had an mm -hmm. opportunity, not that I'm condoning, you know, what they done, what they did, but you had an opportunity where you had this cash, you know, and it was for business owners. Why not get the, the cash and just start the business? Right. You yeah, know, yeah. invest the money, <clears throat> even if it was ill gotten gains, invest the money in something that's going to bring you more money. Mm -hmm. And it just didn't happen. You know, they're buying designer that they can't even spell. It's like, yeah. It's such a waste. And then, you know, you know that nothing is free. And right. it's like, if it's too good, to, if it sounds too good to be true, then it probably mm. is. So since when is the government just handing out free money like this? You know, and I think now that, you know, it's catching up to them, they're, they're learning that. Um, so when, when you look at stuff like that, you know, you get angry. But then when I see like, you know, cases of pr police brutality and stuff like that, then it's like, you know, I don't know. I don't know which side to be on. You mm. know, one day I'm on this side, the other day I'm on the other side of the fence. So, yeah, I, um, when it comes to, to the, the stupidity and the youth and the adults in the room, I get yeah. enraged at it all because it's like. The adults are not teaching, mm -hmm. the kids are not learning they they're, they're not taking accountability anywhere and it's like nobody sits back and says i don't want to be like that um because you know i grew up watching everybody get mm. high everybody mm. get drunk everybody having orgies and this that and other and i said that is not going to be me so i i get some people just they mm. just have it hard and they can't make it out but you know a lot of the people that i see it's like I don't even understand what your issue is because, you know, you have the ability, but you just choose not to. And mm -hmm. you and, and, and it's like that crab is in a bucket mentality is such a magnet for so many. It's like, at what point do y'all just say that's not going to be me and stop following mm -hmm. what you see on YouTube and, and, and in the streets and stuff like that? Because it's like, I don't get it. I don't get it. And I, th I think that's the confusion for me. Like, I, I can't. You know, my, my parents did pretty well for themselves. So, you know, I, I, I had the, the shelter childhood. I can't say that, you know, I got it out the mud and all that other mm -hmm. stuff because, you know, that, that wasn't. I, I went to private school and, you know, all mm -hmm. that other stuff. Um, but mm -hmm. when I'm looking at, you know, people who have had to grow up in poverty, mm -hmm. you know, where utilities were cut off or they didn't have food and you know different things like that then I think the same way you think like okay if this is the struggle that you had growing up and you know how hard it was why would you want that for your child mm, or right. once you have an opportunity to get out of it why wouldn't you take advantage of it yeah. and I have um, you know some family members who had um, some, some hard times growing up and all of them, well, I don't want to say all of them, a blanket statement, most of them, <laughs> most of them, you know, took that setback and used mm -hmm. it as the motivation to do better for themselves. And, mm -hmm. you know, now they're doing well for themselves. You know, they have children, you know, they're doing good for their children. Their children have grown up. You know, it's kind of like, at what point do you say, you know, I'm going to break the cycle. This cycle right. ends with me. Mm -hmm. But to, to perpetuate it, it's it's just like, what are you doing? What are you thinking? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Why aren't you thinking at that point? Yeah. 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 You know, and I, I'm just like, especially now that, you know, social media gives us an opportunity to somewhat be voyeurs. 
-hmm. we can, you know, we get a bird's eye view into other folks' lives and see how other people live. And if you're Mm -hmm. looking at other people and this isn't your reality, nobody is doing anything that somebody else isn't capable of doing. So why aren't you trying to figure out, you know, how they got to where they are or maybe connect with somebody who could, you know, point you in the right direction or give you a, you know, a hand up so that you can get to, you know, a better place in life. And we're, we're just, we're, our focus is all wrong in, in in a lot of cases. And if it doesn't make sense to me. (laughs) <laughs> it doesn't make sense at all. So let me, um, so one of your things was, uh, uh, women's rights, uh, and yes. you mentioned reproductive rights and, and we all know this Roe versus Wade being overturned is a hot yeah. thing. Um, yes. my thing first and foremost, cause I put something on Facebook and somebody went way left, way right with it. And I'm like, uh-huh. are you not reading what I'm saying? I'm all for women's rights. Uh Um, my issue is this Roe versus Wade being overturned. It does not apply to a lot of people. And and what Uh I mean by that is the irresponsible people out there who are just doing whatever with whoever for Uh me, Roe versus Wade doesn't apply to them. Now, if you are, you know, mishandled as a woman, as a girl or, or, you have health reasons or whatever, mm-hmm. whatever reason that you have that's valid for you, I'm all for it. But my problem is the the irresponsible people, the people who say, oh, damn, I did this. Let me go get an abortion or I did this. Let me go get the pill. So when you look at that whole thing, what is your point of view on it? Um, I'm conflicted. I'm mm-hmm. conflicted because taking away their choice i think opens a pandora's box right so if we have somebody let's just say they're irresponsible and they're forced to go through with an unwanted pregnancy Mm -hmm. and say they don't have the means to support the child then that's a burden to the taxpayers because yeah. they're going to be relying on government assistance or let's go a step further an unwanted pregnancy. So what if they have, you know, animosity towards this child that mm-hmm. they didn't want and then they become abusive towards this child, then, you know, you're adding another layer and we don't have a crystal ball. We can't predict the outcome after that child is birthed. Right. You know, do we gamble with that? Do we force a woman to have a child that she doesn't want? Hmm. You know? Yeah, We're, I we're mean... supposed to, as women, have, you know, maternal instincts. Well, we know that every woman doesn't, you know, possess that. <laughs> right. Um, but, you know, when you're, when you're adding all of this, you know, I, I guess there's, there's too many ways for it to go left for me mm-hmm. that makes me uncomfortable with it. And, and although it may not be the choice for me, mm-hmm. I do recognize that it may not be, it may be, the choice for someone else. Yeah. I, I mean, I get it. Um, you know, and, and you see, hear people saying that, you know, adoption is an issue and, you know, stuff like that, but that, that presents a whole set of problems too. Yeah. And you no, know, it shouldn't, they shouldn't be using abortion as a band aid. at the same time. You know, I don't know. Is the glass half empty or is it half full? Yeah. Um, you know, my thing, like I say, I'm all for a woman doing whatever she want to do because it's her body. I, Mm I I don't own it, but the only thing that, um, and again, I'm, I'm, it's whatever. I believe a woman should do what she want to do with her body. Mm -hmm. But my, my concern overall is, you know, abortions cause problems and I'm not talking, 
you know, financially. I'm talking emotional and physical problems. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I don't think a lot of people take that into consideration, you know, when they're looking at this. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and, and when it comes to a woman's body, yeah, that's your body, that's your choice. And if that's what you want to do, go do it. But it might come a time five, six years later or ho however long after that where you find this right person or you feel it's the right time for you to have a baby with mm -hmm. or without the, that man involved. And because you got that abortion or two or three, you may not be able to carry a baby to turn. Right. And, 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 you know, that's, I look at the, that's why I say the people need to be more responsible and mm -hmm. stop focusing on this Roe versus Wade thing. Again, mm -hmm. your body, you do what you want. And, and the women who are victims of, of, of you know, these <clears throat> atrocities, I get it. But these people, and, and, I was a teenager. I was hiding the ass, so mm -hmm. I get it. You want to get it. You want to get it. You want to get it. But, you know, you, you have to think about those things. Mm -hmm. And and I agree with I agree with you. Um, I think in those, this is going to sound a little bit harsh, but in those cases, if they choose that, mm -hmm. they choose to terminate a pregnancy, and then later they struggle with, infertility mm -hmm. then that's the risk that you accepted when you made the choice that you made so yeah. now you gotta put your big girl <laughs> panties on and you gotta wear them um yeah. and then but then you know the christian in me mm -hmm. I, I you know i waver <laughs> right. i vacillate a little bit um because I also believe that what God has for you is for you. Mm -hmm. So if the child is meant to be here, then the child will. So the Christian and the lay person, you know, I, I struggle. So I, get I don't know. I, I, get I just kind of, I'm okay with, I do very well at minding my own business. <laughs> I know that's right. So, you know, and then, and I, 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 it, some of it just doesn't make sense because we have, we have HIPAA laws where we can't share people's medical information exactly. with somebody who isn't authorized yet. We'll have round table discussions about somebody's health care. So it's kind of like, mm -hmm. well, what is it? Is it private or is it not private? Exactly. Like, what are we doing here? Yeah. Um, but if, if I'm not, if I'm not authorized or a party to whatever is happening in that exam room, then it's not my business. So mm -hmm. I, I tend to stay out of it. I feel you on that. Maybe the only people I want in my business are the people that are in the room with me when, you know, when the, the legs get thrown in the air. Is, right. My <laughs> legs are in the air on the stirrups, you know. Yeah. Outside of that, you Outside know. Outside of that, hey, mind your business. Yes. This ain't for you. Right. So, um, what were your motivations to get into podcasting? Whew. Um, that's, that's a crazy, crazy, crazy situation. So, um... I already told everybody that I was I was married and divorced twice, um, mm -hmm. and I got a ring on now because I was engaged, mm -hmm. and um, we were we were living our life kind of publicly uh, mm -hmm. by way of social media, okay. and our friends and relatives and everybody thought that we were like relationship goals, so. Um, because we were sharing things on social media, somebody had said, you know, we should have done a podcast. So mm, okay. we were we were planning to do a podcast together. Mm -hmm. And um, we know, well, we don't know, but he ended up passing away um, before that could come to fruition. Mm -hmm. And after he passed away, it was kind of like, okay, well, we had plans to do this. The duo is now 
uno. Right. So what do I do? Do mm-hmm. I do I turn and go in a whole different direction, mm-hmm. or do I take the lemons and make lemonade? Um, I chose to take the lemons and make lemonade. And, I hear that, and hey, here and, I and am. I love it. I love it. I love it. Uh, yeah. First time I tuned in, I was like, "All right, go." Cool. Yeah. And, and it was fortunate enough. What, what, when did I tune in? Was I? I think I was leaving work or something like uh-huh. that. I tuned in. I was. I was driving, listening. I was like, yeah. "All right, shit, cool. I gotta, you know, check out." You know. Then I popped yeah. up on there one day. And, I, you know, I was. I was. I was so nervous, like, to do this, because then it was kind of like. Well, if it's just me, what am I going to be talking about? Right, because, yeah. you know, it's different if you have a partner and, you know, yeah. you guys are, you know, talking and just having a regular conversation and it kind of flows. And then it was kind of mm-hmm. like, well, well, if I'm just on here by myself, what am I going to be talking about? Right. Um, and then I, I, I realized that, OK, you know, there's a whole lot that has happened in your life, girl, you know. <laughs> You got a whole story. Um, and after he passed, I was in, I ended up having to go to grief therapy mm-hmm. and or grief counseling. And my therapist in grief counseling, one of her homework assignments for me was to write like when when I would have my down days she would have me like write letters to my fiance and like say the things or express how I was feeling and stuff Mm -hmm. like that and um you know in our sessions she would be asking me different things you know you go for one thing and y'all end up talking about 17,000 others so um (laughs) I would be talking to the therapist and like tell her, she would just ask like random question. And I would answer the question and, you know, it would lead me down a rabbit hole. Mm -hmm. And this is, you know, during the pandemic. So we're doing like telehealth where it's, you know, video. Right. And there would be times where I would be saying, you know, recounting different experiences. And she would be sitting there like with her mouth open, <laughs> wow. her, her hands over her mouth. Uh-huh. And, you know, I'm just telling the story. I'm just, you know, rattling on. Uh-huh. And she was like, you know, astounded by the things that I was saying to her. And she's like, well, wait, you know, she, she happened to be African-American also. And she's like, how did you get through that? And I'm mm-hmm. like, I don't know, you know. I mean, we're, I come from a, a family of strong women. Mm-hmm. Like I told you, you know, some of them, they, you know, marriage is where they don't have, it's kind of like, you know, right. you get knocked down, you get back up and continue to fight. So right. that's what I told her. I'm like, shoot, I take a beat and I get back up and I keep going, you know. And she just was, you know, in disbelief and, I didn't realize that it was so unbelievable because, you know, I'm just living life every day. Mm. And um, <clears throat> another one of those assignments of hers was for me to start journaling. Okay. And journaling one page turned into several, turned into a chapter, and I actually started writing a book. Okay. Um, it's not completed, but um, I have several chapters written and you know, we don't, when we live in life, we don't know that our lives are, you know, playing out any different than Mm -hmm. anybody else's. Yes, that is true. Until you start telling somebody else and then they're like, well, wait a minute, like, uh, that ain't normal. (laughs) That ain't normal, girl. Oh, (laughs) man. So, So, yeah. So, 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 um, when do you plan on completing this book? You know, I don't know. Here's here's the thing. Um, I don't know if I want everybody all up in my business. You know, like really? I'm 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 an open book, but I'm not like and and YouTube is kind of uh, making me a little leery. You know, I've been on YouTube. <laughs> Wait a minute. YouTube, I've been on YouTube for 30 seconds uh-huh. and already they, they stalking me. They trying to figure out where I live. They, oh, they randomly calling and sending messages. And I'm like, they don't even know who I am at this point. So I'm like, if I, if I do this book and I put it out and, 
you know, now I'm I'm widening the widening the audience, right? Yeah. And giving them more than a bird's eye view. Like I'm letting them really all up in my stuff. Mm. I was like, I don't know if I want to do that. Like, I don't know. Mm. People just aren't well, you know. And yeah, they are not well. Just like from these YouTube shows, you know, people will get mad over your business, be ready to argue, fuss, cuss, and fight. Oh my. And I'm like, I don't, I don't know if I want to be bothered with that. Mm, I feel so, you. Like that. Yeah, you know, it's different when you give a little snippet here or there, but yeah. <laughs> to like spill all your tea and tell everything. They want to put their own sugar in your tea to make it good. <laughs> you know, right? I, I live in my truth, and you know, nobody can shame me. Right. With my truth. I know that I'm with. But this. I don't with know. You on that. If you know, I'm like, I don't, I don't know. So, mm. um, I have, I have quite a bit of it, uh, written. And I mean, I know that even if I decide to, you know, complete it and publish it, there's always going to be naysayers or some kind of, you know, pushback, somebody who ain't going to be a fan or don't understand why you're doing it that I get. Um, but I'm a mother mm -hmm. and my babies are the most important thing in the world to me. Right. And, you know, I think about the effect that it would have on them, you know, yeah. and then part yeah. of my story, you know, because they have fathers or sperm donors, mm -hmm. um, you know, me sharing my story would share part of their stories as right. well. Yeah. And I wouldn't yeah. want anybody, you know, looking at my kids crazy or whatever, because, mm -hmm. You know, if they say something wrong or do something, then, it's, you it's know, on. my next interview is going to be from behind the jail cell wall, <laughs> you know, through the glass or something. I don't oh, know, through the bars. Y'all going to see me in there. Yeah, it is, you know. Oh, um, so I, I don't know. Mm, okay. I, okay. Yeah. So, so, so with that being said, um, you know, you talked about the stories with your, your, your counselor and stuff like that and journaling. Yeah. Um, was your podcast always meant to be on YouTube? And I ask you that because with your stories, um, like you could actually, you know, I mean, it, you can tailor it to put it in a just audio podcast. Have you ever uh -huh. thought of that, or was it just no? YouTube? Actually, we were going, we were going to be when we originally started this, we were going to do a podcast on Spotify. Okay, where okay. it was just going to be the audio. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I told you we were sharing stuff. So we would have our date nights and we would always take pictures and, you know, we mm -hmm. would do these little photos. He he thought he was a paparazzi or something. He always had a camera or phone mm -hmm. or something. So we had all these photos. And a friend of mine, she was like, you guys look good together. Y'all are a cute couple. Mm -hmm. You know, y'all need to capitalize on that. So mm. why not do YouTube? I'm like, I don't know if I want to do YouTube, you know, I mean, because it's different if they can hear us versus somebody seeing yeah. you, you know, yeah. you never know where the thing is going to go. Am I going to be able to go out in public and still be, mm -hmm. you know, anonymous, have that anonymity, you know, when I go outside the house or whatever. Um, so, no, we weren't we were going to be behind the scenes. It was just going to be audio. Okay. And and then we decided YouTube and here I am. Mm. Okay. So yeah. Sticking to that YouTube topic. Uh huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> Since you've been podcasting on YouTube, what are the things that you like the most? Um, I have met so many dope people since I've been on YouTube and before I launched my channel, I was on someone else's channel mm -hmm. and I was kind of like making my rounds. I went on somebody else's channel and you know how it goes. You start right. networking mm -hmm. and before you know it, somebody asks you to come on their show and you're on another show. So I was all over the place um, before I had launched my own channel, before I had mm -hmm. put anything up. And once I finally did, um, and I'm, I'm still not, you know, investing the time in myself like I should. I've just mm -hmm. recently kind of pulled back from being on other people's shows 
um, as much. Um, but in the networking of it all, 